I've told you before about how the Peloponnesian War between 431 and 404 BCE was a large, complex war. I've told you about some of the complications faced by one side or the other, such as the Plague of Athens in 430 BCE. This plague caused a huge disruption in Athens' military plans and weakened their power. This week's story is about how the forces of nature prevented the Spartans' original plans and could have very well changed the course of the war. This week's story is about the Malian Gulf Tsunami of 426 BCE. Sit back, relax, and let me tell you a story while Rome burns. It is no secret that the Earth's surface can be a dangerous place, and nothing is more unpredictable than the movements of the Earth's tectonic plates. The Aegean Sea Plate is bordered by several other tectonic plates with varying types of faults, subduction and divergent faults. These types of faults can cause dangerous earthquakes, with subduction faults often causing the most devastating earthquakes ever recorded, and often triggering accompanying tsunamis. It was a subduction zone quake that caused the tsunami that hit Japan in 2011, which caused the Fukushima nuclear plant meltdown. Humans have known for our entire existence the dangers and cost of living on such a capricious planet. In 426 BCE, the Spartans were in the middle of making preparations to invade Attica and continue their assault on the Athenian lands. Sparta was enjoying many victories in the war, having not suffered from the plague the way Athens had. This push into Attica could have been a final push and could have seen Spartan victory, but it was not meant to be. Sometime in the summer of 426, the height of the campaign season in Greece, a series of earthquakes shook the coasts of the Malian and Euboean Gulfs. The wall of a fort, the town hall, and several other buildings had collapsed in the town of Peparaphus. But the sigh of relief that the citizens of these Gulf coasts felt didn't last long. Shortly after the series of earthquakes, Thucydides records the retreating of the coastline, stating that the water, quote, retired, unquote, from the coast. Suddenly, a huge wave of water and force crashed into the coasts at two locations. First, at Orobe, where the wave crashed through the town, drowning and destroying much of the area. Many inhabitants were unable to make it to the high ground and met their fates beneath the crushing forces of the tsunami. After the tsunami hit Orobe, much of the area remained underwater and was no longer habitable. Eventually, the town would recover, going on to be known for its temple and oracle. The second location to experience the devastation of the tsunami was the island of Atlante. During the first year of the Peloponnesian War, the Athenians had built a strong fort on the previously uninhabited island as a measure to prevent pirate raids against the areas of Euboea. As the tsunami rocked the island, the fort was torn apart, dashing half the ships beached there against the land, destroying them in the process, causing great damage and killing some of the soldiers occupying the fort. Unlike Arobe, Atlante would recover and remain in Athenian control for some time, until the 50-year peace treaty known as the Peace of Nicias gave the island back to the Spartans. Many in ancient Greece were quick to blame any natural disaster, any plague, any disease, or any invasion on the displeasure of the gods. Previous tsunami in Greek history were blamed on the wrath of Poseidon. And really, who could blame the Greeks for thinking this way? The forces of the world were still largely unknown to people during this time. And so they had to come up with the best explanations that they could. Thucydides, however, did not suffer from this same sense of superstition. He instead connected the dots between the earthquakes that preceded the retreat of the waters from the coastline and the large tsunami that had washed away so much of the land, buildings, and people. This was the first recorded event in history where earthquakes and a tsunami 
were logically connected to each other. Of course, Thucydides did not have the benefit of our current age. He couldn't have known about tectonic plates, the movements of faults, or the powers lurking just below the surface. Still, he was able to use his critical thinking skills and capacity for out-of-the-box thinking to put those two seemingly disparate pieces of information together. We are often bogged down by the pressures of the disasters at hand that it sometimes seems easier to pass it off as the work of some angry spirit or deity. Oftentimes, we will even blame ourselves for the bad luck that comes our way or ruins our lives. Oftentimes, however, there is no grand purpose behind any of it. Sometimes the disasters just happen, and all we can do is try to mitigate future disasters from happening. We might not have all the information to explain the disaster, but with luck, perseverance, and just a bit of critical thinking, we can know how to address future disasters when they occur. The tsunami of the Malian Gulf in 426 BCE prevented the Spartans from advancing any further into Attica that year, and put off much of the campaigning season for the Spartans. The lack of raids and attacks by the Spartans gave Athens time to prepare their forces better, and even led to a couple of Athenian victories during the campaigns of that year. Thus, a timely earthquake and tsunami helped keep the Athenians in the fight against Sparta in the war. Whether the will of the gods or the timely intervention of the forces of nature, the Athenian army lived to fight another day. While Rome Burns is part of the One Up Podcast Network. Find more of our content, including transcripts, cast info, and more podcasts by going to oneuppodcast.com. Cover art by Igor Nunez. Find more of his work by going to wecan.artstation.com and contact him for commissions on Twitter at wecan. That's W-H-Y-C-C-A-N. Background music provided by One Place Here under a public domain dedication from Creative Commons. Find them on Twitter at Monplacier Music or at freemusicarchive.org slash music slash Monplacier. That's M-O-N-P-L-A-I-S-I-R. Episode 9 will release in a week to get us back on schedule. Thank you for your patience and thank you so much for listening.